Here are five advanced Lightroom tricks you can use to immediately bring your photos to that next level. And no, I promise these are not just basic tips you hear other YouTubers talk about. In fact, I challenge you to post in the comments how many of these tips you already knew about. And I would be impressed if anyone here already knew about more than maybe one or two of these. These tricks are tried and tested methods that I've been using for myself and clients I've worked with to make our photos stand out for the rest. So let's dive into it. All right, the first trick is a method I use to separate the subject off the background and give them a unique look. Essentially, what you will do here is increase the exposure and use dehaze to create a nice contrast on the subject. This has got to be one of my favorite tricks that I've been using recently to really give my subjects a unique contrast. This can be used for many different types of photos and subjects, but I actually find that it works especially good on cars or objects that are somewhat reflective. The first step of this process is to mask out your subject. Now, I'm going to teach you another great technique for masking out your subject when the AI masking tools don't work perfectly later on in this video. But for now, let's just let Lightroom do its best to give us a mask on our subject. From here, we are going to start bringing up the exposure a bit. This is because when you use dehaze, it will tend to darken things. So in order to keep the photo properly exposed when using this technique, you need to increase the overall exposure. Once you've done that, you can start to apply the dehaze and this starts to create sort of a contrasty effect onto the photo that I personally really love. Try this out and let me know in the comments how it worked for you. The second trick I'm going to show you is how to get perfect white balance on your photos every single time. What we're going to do is start by increasing the vibrance and saturation sliders all the way to 100. This is going to give us a very clear view as to where our white balance is in the photo. It makes it a lot easier to see whether we are too cool or too warm on our white balance and once you've increased the saturation brightness, you can then go into the temperature and start pushing it warmer or cooler to try and get a nicely balanced image. Once you've done this, drop the saturation and vibrant slider back to the original position and your photo will be perfectly balanced. Keep in mind that after you do this, your eyes are going to need a little bit of time to adjust back to normal because they will have adjusted to the extremely saturated image and you might think that your photo is too desaturated afterwards. This may lead you to making a mistake in trying to correct for that and increasing the saturation too much. The third trick is using curves based on where the information is in the photo instead of just using a generic curve. What I mean by this is that in some photos, the information in the photo may be heavily pushed in one direction or another, or it may be squished together, meaning that the photo is brighter or darker and not necessarily exposed in the middle and spread out perfectly. I almost never put my curve points in the same spots on every photo. I always put one where the shadow information is, one where the midtone information is, and one where the highlight information is. If we wanted generic contrast to be added in, we would just use the contrast slider. We use the curves because we want full control of where we put the contrast into our image. I can be a lot more precise with my curve adjustments using this method instead of adding a generic curve that I see a lot of other YouTubers recommend. Now, as I said earlier, I'm going to show you guys my fourth trick, which is how to get a perfect mask on the subject even if the AI isn't able to do it automatically using the subject or person masking tool. Instead of using those, we are going to get a mask of our subject using the object masking tool. This tool is awesome and extremely quick. All you need to do is paint over your subject, don't miss any parts, and don't worry too much about drawing outside of the lines. Then when you are finished drawing over your subject, just release the mouse and it will automatically mask out the subject. All right, guys, and here is the fifth and final Lightroom trick. This one is actually two tricks in one, but they are my two most used hotkeys inside of Lightroom. The first one is the L key. 
you can use this to darken everything around your photo so that it becomes easier for you to see your edit, the colors, and make better judgments as to what adjustments you should be making to get the exact look that you want. The second one is the backslash key. Now, I know most of you probably already use this one a ton, but it's the one I get the most questions about, so I figured I'd show you guys just in case you don't know about it. Essentially, what the backslash key does is it shows you the before and after of your photo. This can be extremely useful for checking your image to make sure that you didn't get too crazy with the edit. Sometimes our eyes start adjusting to our edit and need to get recalibrated in order to properly see the colors of our image that we are editing. Anyways, that's it. If you enjoyed this video and would like me to do more photo editing tutorials, just let me know by subscribing and dropping a comment below with what you would like me to talk about next. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.